It's Jim. Sorry to call so early. Yeah, as a supervisor on call, I need to tell you that when I came in this morning, I thought I saw something in the yard. No, there wasn't anything there, but somebody had forced one of the buses open. 423. No. No, nothing was taken, but there was a small box up underneath one of the seats. No, I didn't touch it. It's still there. No. No, there weren't any wires or sound or anything. It was just a box. Yeah. Yeah, I do think it warrants getting the police out here to check the thing out. Okay. Okay, I'll give the bus a full inspection and then I'll quarantine it till the police get here. Good morning, Jim. Morning, Charlene. I can't let you take 423 this morning. It's quarantine. I found a small box underneath one of the passenger seats. Samantha called the police and they came and checked the whole bus out. Police said it was a, some sort of a short range radio jamming device. Why anybody would want to put a radio jammer on a school bus? You're going to be in 846 today. OK, thank you, Jim.
thought he'd want to put a radio jammer on a school bus. You know where 18th Street is? Yes. You know where it is 2700 on 18th Street? Yes. I want you to go straight ahead until you come to Main Street, take a right on the 18th Street, and pull into the warehouse at 2700 on the 18th Street. You got it? Well, I'm, I'm standing here on the corner. Bus just drove by. Hey, this is Alan Tompkins, and my kid's bus just went by and didn't even stop. Magnolia ISD, how may I help you? Hi, can I talk with someone about something strange that happened on my daughter's school bus this morning? I'll direct your call. Thank you. District Dispatch, how may I help you? Hi, this is Carolyn Johnson, and this morning when my daughter got on the school bus, two men got on as well. Is that allowed? Uh, normally not. Um, now I don't have an immediate explanation. There are certain circumstances where a parent or legal guardian can ride the bus with a child. Um, let me investigate the situation, and I'll call you back and see what I found out. What was the, what was the bus number on that one? Yes, it's bus number 423. And thanks. I just thought it was really strange the way those two guys got on there. Yeah, and, oh, let me get a number where I can reach you. Sure, it's 555-1213. Okay, thank you. And I will get back to you. Uh, thanks for your patience. Yes, this is Jonathan at the school district's dispatch office. I think we have a situation developing here. Uh, here's all the information as I know it now. This morning, police removed a radio jamming unit from bus number 423. That bus was quarantined. Um, a mother just called me to inform me that two unknown men got onto the bus that replaced that bus. It's time for me to check in. If I don't, it'll raise suspicion. Okay, go ahead. Unit 846 to base. Code green, no response necessary. Code green, no response necessary. Nine one one. what is your emergency? Yes, this is Jonathan with the school district's dispatch office. Uh -huh. I filed a report earlier about a possible situation developing with one of our elementary school buses. Uh -huh. Yes, I have confirmed that we have an emergency. Our driver of bus number 846 just radioed in a distress code. Uh -huh. She said, condition green, which indicates a hijack situation. And she also said, no response necessary, which means she does not want us to try to use the radio system to contact her. Uh-huh, yeah, the, the last known location of that bus uh, that was on Westlake and 53rd. Jonathan with the school district's dispatch office, I need to speak to the operations manager. Operations manager, Samantha Cole here. Yes, we have a situation developing and I have called 911. As the situation is now, here's the information that I have confirmed. This morning, a radio transmitter was removed from the bus.
Okay, everyone, out of the bus. Stop the engine, give me the keys right now. Okay, everyone, out of the bus. Move it. Watch that. the cage right now and be quiet everyone go move it come on go stop wait all right come on move it to the back room let's go are we going to move the bus soon right now drive Till the metro is cool. What are you going to do with those kids? What's in those tubes? Why are you doing this? Revenge! Revenge! All available units, we have a possible hostage situation involving a school bus. Be on the lookout for bus number 846, whereabouts unknown. Suspects should be considered armed and dangerous. The vehicle's on the move and its destination is believed to be the elementary school. This is Samantha Cole, operations manager. I need to speak with Principal Hopkins right away. This is Principal Hopkins. Principal Hopkins, this is Samantha Cole, operations manager. We have information that a bus has been hijacked. Uh, how much do you know at this point? Yes, we may need to begin arrangements for a possible evacuation. How many children are on the bus? We aren't sure, but there may be between four and six. Yes, I understand. Yes, sir? We have a situation developing. Uh, please inform the department heads that we may need to evacuate this school. We'll use the same plan as for a fire emergency. So tell the staff to prepare for a fire drill. Yeah. 
preparedness and teamwork, a frightening situation did not become a tragic situation. Awareness on the part of the bus mechanic defeated a key element of the hijacking plan early on. An alert parent immediately notified the school about unusual events at the bus stop, starting the emergency response process. The bus dispatcher, school administrators, and teachers swiftly took the right actions based on their security plan and the bus driver's calm and deliberate behavior helped to resolve a terrifying situation without violence. It's important to mention that the driver took a number of courageous defensive actions that may not always be possible or desirable during a real attack. Some of the things she did might actually raise the danger level by antagonizing and frustrating the hijacker. In a real attack, the driver will have to judge how far he can go without risking harm to his or her self, their bus, and the passengers. Hopefully, the awareness training drivers receive in this program will help them make these critical judgments in the best interest of their own safety and that of their passengers. Training, awareness, and planning allowed this school to avoid a catastrophe. Now, what about your school system? How do you think the story would end if a similar incident occurred on one of your buses? If you believe there's no risk of a security threat against school buses, consider this. Every day, 25 million children across the United States ride buses. Recent world events have shown us that international terrorists make no distinction between civilian and military targets. In fact, some terrorist groups have shown their willingness to use children in schools as targets. In addition to transporting children to and from school, buses frequently take trips to public buildings national monuments, and other significant destinations. School buses used as terrorist weapons clearly have enormous potential to cause destruction and loss of life. None of us likes to imagine the possibility that our school buses could become the targets of security threat. But the facts are unambiguous. Buses are vulnerable to attack by hijackers, suicide bombers, and remotely detonated explosive devices. Bus operations, including school buses, have been and will continue to be targets of those who use violence to promote their agendas. That's reality. But accepting reality doesn't mean living in fear. By applying the awareness and knowledge you'll gain in this training program, you can reduce the threat of security incidents on school buses. Being alert for potential problems can prevent many dangerous situations from ever happening having a transportation security plan in place allows school personnel and parents to respond properly if a crisis does occur. By working together, you can take the right actions to keep your public school transportation system safe for all your children.